Feeling over you The things that you do how do you feel about doing this? Um, it's so funny because when uh, I was first introduced to it, I said, no, I can't do that. You know, I can't do that. And then I literally thought about it and literally let it sink in my spirit. And something was like, you kind of have to do that because your relationship with your body and clothes has been a very long one. As I just know I'm not the only one that feels like you're renting this thing and you own it at the same time. Can you talk about what your style says about you? I think my style says that um, I'm colorful and that I just might be an artist if you don't know already that I am one. I think it's very important that I like what's going on with myself because there were so many times that I wasn't comfortable, that I like to feel comfortable. That's so stupid, what am I? That's so stupid, like what am I getting emotional for? It's so silly. Yourself. It's early in the game. <laughs> there's no, there's no prescription, Dang, there's no prescription for, me, for emotions. It's so funny that I live my life in the most noticeable fashion these days, when before I would do anything to blend in with the walls. Can you talk about assumptions that you think people make about you? Yesterday I was in the store with this jacket on and uh, I saw a childhood friend and I stood around and I talked to her for a long time. And then when I left out the store, a police officer ran after me and was like, there was a person running around the store um, with a long jacket on. And, uh, and you know, if you have anything in your bag, you really need to take that out right now. And I was like, what? This is actually, um, this is a robe, actually, sir. <laughs> and I love it. And um, it's cold outside and I walked away. I felt powerful, cause you're wrong. You're so wrong about me, dude. And I'm so happy that you are wrong. I think it was really more in, in middle school when I became more aware of my body. It would be hot in the summertime in New Orleans, which is really, really hot. And I would be wearing sweaters. I would be wearing my sister's jeans and she would be smaller than me and I would wear a big sweater to cover the fact that I couldn't button them. So it would be, you know, everything was a fix here, a nip there, a compensation here, you know, so you won't see what's really going on. What happened, like, to get to the point where you... Hurricane Katrina. I left and I moved to Indianapolis, to a place where they wore no uniforms. I've been wearing school uniforms you know, all my life. And then I go to this place where they're not wearing any. They put us up in this, um, this apartment complex and there's this room in the apartment complex just for New, Orle New Orleanians where it is a, a house full of thrift store clothes that people had given away and me and my sister were in heaven. We would go in there at night and rummage through all the clothes. It was almost like swimming and look for something that uh, makes me feel good about what's going on. That's when I was able to literally redefine who I wanted to be. That was probably the worst and best time of my life. When you say that it was the worst year, what do you mean by that? Oh my God, I would cry every day in my closet. I just couldn't believe that God took me away from home. I couldn't believe that he flooded the whole city, that we weren't coming back. What would you say has been your biggest struggle? Oh my gosh, so many things. Uh, I would say consistency, because if I had consistency, then a lot of the other things would be easier to deal with. If I stayed on a plan where I ate healthy, if I vocally exercised every day, um, if I consistently worked on letting things go instead of holding on to them. Why are you holding on? In my household, growing up, so many things that were so important to me were let go so easily. It's just family dynamics. Like, my oldest sister moving out really early. Like, really early. Like, not remembering growing up with her, and that's wrong. How and, old was she? She was probably 13 when we left, when she left to go live with my grandparents. She left because she didn't really, uh, she didn't really like my mom's new husband. You know, he was 
It's very foreign to all of us. I think he should have left, not her. My mom would let a lot of things go. You know, she would fuss about it, but sooner or later, it would really be like it never happened. And I'd be like, how come you hold on longer? You know, how come you have bigger, you know, repercussions for, for what he did or what he said, you know? And, and, then, and, and in my adult life, I find myself, you know, nope, I'm not gonna, not gonna forgive that that easily. My experience with my mom wasn't, wasn't too bad. It, it just literally was watching my mom in her other relationships that would make me more um, upset or feeling, you know, injustice. What, 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 what was that injustice? It's untouchable. There's this old saying that in a lot of households, especially black ones, what goes on in this house stays in this house. And uh, it just felt like everybody had a story and that just happened to be mine. The other parts of it, the shh parts of it. So can you talk about um, what a, a biggest insecurity you had to overcome or that you're working on overcoming? Lord, um, every black woman wants just a big ass. <laughs> you don't feel like you have the liberty to show your body like that because you're not typically what we would call fine, you know? You, you're not fine. You have no right to be wearing a tight shirt and tights at the same time. Your foop are gonna fill out, fill out. Your no behind gonna be showing. Your not shapely hips is going to look straight. You know, it's like there are rules to be a, a big girl. The rules are you should always wear undergarments to tuck yourself in and to make your outfits look proper. You know, your face has to be on. Your lashes, your makeup, you have to be on. You if have you're to look good. a big girl, that's, that's If you're a girl, period. But if you're a thicker girl, uh, thicker girls tend to go the extra mile. When I'm naked, I just tend to take my gut and just shake it all the time. I just shake it like, look at it. To yourself? Oh yes. When I was young, I used to want to cut it off. Like literally take a knife and cut it off. I would love to wear a two piece one day. I've never did that before. Mostly when I want to wear something that I just feel like you can't wear that. Just wait until you lose some more weight. Does your struggle affect you in your like intimate relationships? Like if I'm, if I'm naked, I would say, you know, don't look at me. Don't look at me, even though I'm playing, but slightly serious. I used to didn't want the dude to touch my, my behind at all. You wow. know, because it, I just was like, ain't no meat back there. Like, go away. It's nothing there to touch. I would literally be making out with someone and they would go back there and I would be making out and I would smack their hand down, you know? Smack it, push it down so many times to where they would just stop. Who's been one of the biggest influences in your life? My older sisters, for real. Like, Why? They always made me feel proud about having dark skin. I never felt like it was too dark. People around me had those problems and I never thought that it was a problem because my sisters would always tell me, you know, beautiful, oh, look at that pretty chocolate girl. Oh, she's pretty, isn't she? Oh, she looked like she could be one of us. There's so much uh, ugly that can surround uh, black features, even our men. I feel like I feel like our men don't even love us. Like, if you hear the songs that they write about us, it's horrible. The bitches, the hoes, the suck my dick, the the it ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. You know, all of it, and we all sang to it because it got a catchy beat to it. And I'm like, there is no love, y'all. Y'all don't y'all don't love us. Y'all don't love us. And, and how the music is, you know, a poet said it so well, it's more potent than any crack. You know, it goes straight to the soul. To be proud and have an exaggeration of being of African traits. Some purple lipstick to accentuate these big lips or lashes to accentuate these big dark eyes or really big nappy hair to really exaggerate you know, what it is to have uh, black hair, African hair, is, is uh, prideful to me. That girdle. <laughs> when do you feel the most beautiful? 
Ooh, I like feeling beautiful. I feel beautiful when I got my hair done, when somebody has really made up my face really nice, when my outfit banging, and I literally say, oh girl, you it. You look so cute. What would you tell your 12 year old self? Fuck them. Fuck all that shit. If you believe in yourself and work hard, you have anything you fucking want. You're the motherfucking best. Do it or fucking die. Because if, cause even though I act so stupid and lazy and inconsistent, if I wasn't doing this, I would die. I would die inside. Why in your body, in your skin, in your journey, in your life, why is it the case today? Because I believe truly that there's a reason that I am literally honing this body right now, that this spirit is childish and old at the same time, and that it's trying to get it right every lifetime and that right now I have to make it count while I have it. It's so specific that I have these lips and these eyes and, and even this body. That I am, that I feel so special to be black, to be a black girl. I have to make it count, because at the end of my days, I don't want anything in my hands. I want to have given it all. Sure. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid she can see me. Ooh!